Lies, I tell you. Lies. Good morning. Time to get ready. We are getting packed for the hospital, but before we finish doing that, we need to access Mary's port so she's ready to go. Uh, it's one thing we like to do um, before we go in, just to make admission a little easier. Yeah, and because we know exactly how my port works. and So there's my port before the needle. Let's put a needle in it. If you like it, then you better put a needle in it. And I will also say I am feeling totally peaceful about this admission. Like, I don't even feel jittery, and I am so thankful for that. Because typically I would be, like, pretty, pretty nervous at this point. Yeah. Um, I just feel like... It's right. Yeah, it's, it's what we need to do, and... We're going to do it. Um, it's also really nice not having to pack any medical stuff. Yeah. Because I'm going to the hospital and they have everything medical, so that's that takes a huge packing stress off. Yeah, just gotta remember those vest tubes. <laughs> I already put them in the suitcase. Nice. <coughs> it gives us shelter in the storms of life. There's no peace on earth. There is peace in Christ. All right, needle is in. Let's finish packing up. There it is. There is she. Life for the needle in your chest. Literally, like. God bless you. Three minutes after we filmed that last clip, some of the realities set in. I started hearing the crinkling of this plastic, which reminds me that for the next three to six weeks, however long IVs need to go on. Last time I was on IVs, it was six weeks. Um, I'm gonna be hearing those crinkling sounds every time I move and um, my port's been doing this weird thing where like the needle's in right, like I'm getting blood return most of the time and when I move certain ways, the needle is painful I guess I don't know the best way to describe it but it's not it's not sitting right and I think most of that has to do with where the port was placed which I've talked about it's basically in my armpit it's really a very very poorly placed port but it's reality so I have to deal with it but I guess it's just like bringing back all of the like reality of like my port's not going to give us blood return and then we'll have, we'll have to switch the needle and I was looking at like an Instagram post I made um, months ago and it was I guess it was when I was on IVs last like we had to change my needle five times in a week or something ridiculous and it was just like oh yeah that's what I'm gonna get to deal with for the next three weeks on top of side effects of medications and all that so I'm still at peace with the plan I still feel like and as I'm like trying to pack and coughing my brains out and like not breathing great, I know it's the right plan. It's just like the reality of that is, it's kind of like suffocating feeling. Like I'm fine with the fact that I have to go in and I'm fine with knowing that this is my life, this is my reality. I have to choose to be okay with it or else I'm gonna be miserable. But I also know the reality of the things that we're gonna possibly face and it just felt annoying. That's what it comes down to. Hearing my needle every time I move, whether it's the plastic or the needle inside me scratching, whatever it is, um, which both of those things happen um, it's irritating, it's annoying, it's just that, like, constant reminder, like, you've got a needle in your chest, but we're gonna finish packing. <sighs> oh. I'm ready to feel better. Okay. We had fr a friend who sent us 
um, Easter flowers and it made me so sad to think that they were gonna sit at our house and die without us there. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna carry them on my lap and bring them to my room. I am feeling a little bit better than I was. But um, I wanted to say on the way to the hospital and the morning before going to the hospital, one of the things I try really hard, I try, I'm not always successful, is to not take out my stress on Peter or whoever's around me. Um, because the stress is inevitable, but it can be hard to like, I don't know, I just, it's not his fault I'm going in. It's not his fault I'm stressed. It's not his fault my needle's making awful sounds and I don't want it to ever, like, just because he's here next to me, like, I don't want him to take the brunt of the stress, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say. You do a good job with that. I, I try to be really mindful of it. It is not easy. Yeah. Like, or like when we got in the car and I was just like, me. Like, just not feeling it. Like, <coughs> in order that. <coughs> in an attempt to make sure I don't take it out on Peter. Um, we like to put music on, fun music. We ended up having some deep discussions about all the things in the world. Anyway. Um, we are going in. It is sunny and I'm really, really thankful for the sunshine. It also makes me a little cringy because I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to bask in the sun for days or weeks or months, however long I'm in. It is really hard to, it's actually quite impossible to guess how long I'm gonna be in the hospital. And if these crazy people keep driving like crazy people, what in the world? Clearly he had a red light, right? If people drive like that, I might be in the hospital for a lot longer. So at this point, the plan, okay, well first I'll start off with, if you are new around here, hello, welcome to the Fry Life. Um, we are a married couple and we live just outside of Boston. And I was born with a genetic lung disease called cystic fibrosis, which is an everyday battle. And every once in a while, depends on, I don't know, every couple of months maybe, the bacteria that my lungs are fighting kind of gets crazy and it needs some extra help. So I have therapy and medications I do every single day. Then sometimes we need to jack it up a bit and go in the hospital and start some pretty hefty antibiotics. And then what I was gonna say was uh, the reason we can't really foresee how long I'm gonna be in the hospital is one of the challenges we've run into in the last couple of years is it appears my bone marrow is not playing too nicely. So when I'm on these IV antibiotics, and oral antibiotics, depends on whatever. Um, my bone marrow says, actually no. And then my blood counts drop because, yeah, we're not exactly sure the mechanics of how everything works. My spleen is also involved, so it likes to suck up platelets and that sort of thing. So basically my blood counts go a little crazy and then we need extra intervention to figure out how to deal with it. So because of those variables, we're not sure how long I'll be in, but our choice is to, since we can't change our reality, we're gonna embrace it and choose to keep living life, even if it's in a new location. And today, that means the hospital. Peter dropped me off and I am waiting for signing papers and admitting, and then I will go up to my room, but Peter usually meets me here. Um, the timing usually works out perfectly. Lies, I tell you, lies. Mary's room wasn't ready, so we're in the family center right now. We're gonna get some dinner. So they said it would be about an hour. And at this point, I'm just like, eh, like, my back hurts and I need to like lay down and I need to start IVs, so. One hour feels like a little bit, like a long time, but we'll get there. But I do 
I do hold to the fact that that sign is a liar. <laughs> we grabbed a wheelchair and uh, I rolled us down to uh, Bertucci's where we're gonna eat some dinner while we wait. I don't understand why my back is hurting again. I thought it was better. Mm. I just realized this is kind of perfect because we usually like to go out to eat like the night before I get admitted if we have like mm. notice ahead of time. But there was no, I mean, we just haven't been really like feeling like going out. So this is perfect. It's making lemonade out of lemons. That's what it is. There you go. What well, sounds good? Mmm. Pretty much anything at this point. Are you starving? Yep. All right. You ready to do this? Ready as I'm gonna be. All right. Here we go. Her room's ready. We're gonna go across the street and then get her settled in. We are here in Mary's <coughs> hospital room. We uh, did <coughs> the best room on the floor. <laughs> we got the smallest one, but that is okay. We'll make the most of it because we're together. All right, Bones. And uh, I have a very nice nurse. Yeah. It's always so fun when you get a nurse that you know and you love. But I mean, by and large, all the nurses on this floor are just top-notch so you know you're not gonna get a bad one but it's always fun when you get one you know so the rest of the evening is going to look like a lot of questions from different doctors and nurses coming around and uh, I'll put the little clip from the last time Mary was in uh, of us kind of making fun of that whole process the reality is they have to ask the questions yes but Here's what it feels like. How are you feeling? How's your cystic fibrosis doing? How long have you had cystic fibrosis? Tell me your history in the last several months, day by day, <laughs> hour by hour. <laughs> How many times have you coughed in the last 36 hours? How many times have you peed? <laughs> How are you feeling? How many bowel movements have you had? <laughs> your favorite color? How many fingers am I holding up? When did you last clip your toenails? <laughs> when you brush your teeth, which side do you start on? What side of the bed do you sleep on? Now let's go through your medication list. Vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C, and when did you take those last? So I see here you take vitamin D at 10 o'clock a.m. What time would you like to take that? And when did you take those last? <laughs> So, we are going to go through all of that and we'll bring you along in the days ahead of... We'll probably do blood work tonight and then start IVs. Nothing totally crazy or out of the norm. I'll probably go get x-rays. Um, they usually do that on the first night. And yeah, we'll see what else. But I am just super thankful that we got to go out to dinner because that was like a good... Yeah, that was good. It made me feel normal. Good. Even though I barely ate anything, that did not make me feel normal, but oh well. Yeah. Well guys, we're gonna say, as, as always, always, we, we will, will see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Good, good night. night. And we'll end with the, the wagtail. Oh, you're so cute. We'll see you tomorrow.